Um, everybody can see my screen, right? Yep. Okay. So let me start my thing. So thanks so much for the invitation to talk with you all. Um, I'm Jessica Blois, and I wanted to start by acknowledging that I'm speaking to you from the UC Merced campus, um, which is located on the homelands of the Yokuts and Miwok people. Um, and so I want to start by acknowledging their presence here since time immemorial, embrace their continued connection to this region, and pay my respects to their elders and to all Yokuts and Miwok, uh, past and present. So I'm also I'm speaking today on behalf of a large group of collaborators developing a new NSF funded research coordination network um, titled Past Global Change Research, um, it, connecting data systems and practitioners through FAIR and CARE practices. So for those of you unfamiliar with these acronyms, FAIR means findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And CARE is a set of principles uh, related to collective benefit, authority to control, responsibility, and ethics. And our overall goal with this uh, project, with this research coordination network, is to work on building a social and uh, technical capacity that supports the technical impl implementation of ethical open science principles. Um, and as we do that, trying to develop communities of practice um, in online data resources focused on care and fair principles. Okay, so um, I'm going to quickly go over uh, these things, who we are, challenges and goals, overview of the activities, case studies, and uh, our year one symposium. So this project has a unifying focus on uh, vertebrate specimens to start with a bit, but our RCN activities are really aimed to speak more broadly than just vertebrate data. We really bring together folks who are working in or engaging with data resources that fall within several different realms. Um, the PI team is listed there, myself, uh, Jack and Simon from University of Wisconsin, Andrea Tomer from University of Arizona, Megan Balk, who was at NEON, now is at University of Oslo, uh, Lee Lieberman uh, was at Open Context and now is at Princeton, and then Kitty Emery, Michelle Lefebvre are at University of Florida, and Susie Birch at University of Georgia. So you can see there's a nice Nia Tomer representation. Um, and so together, the PI team fills out many of the different uh, realms that uh, is drawn together. Um, and then with our advisory committee, um, different consultants, uh, speakers, and other RCN participants, we really fill out um, this set of resources, this uh, sort of uh, online space, uh, data resource space quite nicely. Um, our project came together, our, our, all the people came together to because I think we we're all experiencing a, a variety of different challenges and goals um, or challenges. And uh, so we came together to see if we could solve them uh, collaboratively. And so the first one was the data interoperability. We all represent different data resources, but there's different, different, large differences uh, among these resources in their degree of adoption. Um, or even knowledge of common standards, uh, such as Dublin Core, Data Site, Science on Schema, you know, Darwin Orchid, et cetera. And um, so we wanted to work through those and that, and, and also sort of start building the connections between our, our data resources. So that led us to AIM-1, um, which was to improve interoperability and reproducibility. Um, I think we all have seen, um, you know, through Neotoma as a, as a good example of this, that data resource growth and complexity has really outstripped the learning curve of individual researchers and data practitioners, right? Um, we need big teams of people to come together uh, to, to really do really wonderful global science that we've, we've seen examples of today. Um, but many researchers um, remain unsure of where or how to best contribute their data, how to access data from existing resources, and how to implement best practices. Um, and so that led to our second aim, which was to really help en enable fair and dare, uh, fair uh, data curation and stewardship among both data managers and, and then um, scientists, disciplinary predict practitioners. And then finally, I think there's an increasing awareness that many scientific practices, including primary data curation, carry legacies of past and present colonialism. You've seen, you saw this on Monday in my talk, which is all the, mo much of the vertebrate data is, is from North America and that's in the Atoma. And so there's, you know, inequities in data access, distribution, and data governance. Um, and so our third aim was really to work through how we can uh, turn that tide, uh, support equity, and improve access um, 
for traditionally uh, marginalized communities, for descendant communities, uh, for, for everyone, really. And so um, across the, the next three years, we have a, a number of different activities uh, that are planned. Um, these activities fall, um, we can sort of categorize them besides the aims, which are shown in different colors, but along axes of equity, uh, you know, at some activities are more related to equity, some activities are more related to informatics. Um, and, you know, by that, I mean, lots of different sort of things within the data resource and, and supporting people and using data resources. And then the application side, right? We're, we're building these, uh, we're sort of examining these issues and equity in the informatics landscape because we want to apply it to our science, to our education, to our engagement. Um, and uh, so some activities fall, you know, closer to one or the other uh, side, um, but, but across the set of things we're doing over the next few years, we really fill out this space nicely. In the first year, we have a big focus on AIMS 1 and AIM 3, and so we're really anchored on the informatics side and thinking about interoperability. So starting out with mapping the landscape of interoperability, um, uh, developing a webinar series so we can bring together folks over the next year virtually to talk through issues. Um, we have this symposium to kick off the effort um, next month, I'll talk about soon. And, um, and then we're anchored by a particular case study, which we'll talk about um, also soon. Um, uh, we're also working through um, uh, starting to focus on uh, how we might think about implementing care principles in our data resources, again, anchored by some case studies, et cetera. So what about these case studies? Um, the first case study that we're really focused on, we shorthand call it creating interoperable data. Um, our goal here is to expand FAIR data curation protocols um, across different data resources and propagate or link um, legacy museum curated zooarchaeological data um, across disciplines and across different data resources. So there's maybe an initial focus on the ZOARCnet at University of Florida and how that really um, links with uh, how the data in the museums that are managed by ZOARCnet link with Neotoma, link with open context, et cetera. So we're using these uh, subset of data resources to work through this interoperability landscape. The second case study is uh, shorthand, we call it doing open science. And our goal here is to, so the, the first case study is a little bit focused on the back end, right? The data managers, how do we create these links? How do we work through some of the technical details? The second case study is really focused on, on resource practitioners. Um, and we've seen really amazing examples through, um, you know, Andre and Suzette's work of, of, and Matthew's and Nick's work of how you sort of create models and bring um, your, your workflows, your education, et cetera, to um, make it more uh, available. Um, but we're, our aim is to create uh, model, work, uh, model open science workflows aimed at data practitioners um, within the uh, broader quaternary science community. That is really starting in year two. Um, and so uh, we're not focused on that most immediately. And then the final um, the final uh, case study is uh, sort of thinking through the care principles uh, from uh, principles to action. And that is in that we're really exploring uh, pathways for implementing care practices in different archeological and paleontological uh, data resources. Um, and initially focusing again on Neotoma, on open context and on ZOARCnet. So most immediately, um, what's occupying a lot of my time, our time, is thinking about this initial symposium. So we have a symposium that brings everybody together in person for the first time. It's being held at the Biosphere 2 in Arizona um, in about a month from now, almost exactly. And so our goal here is really to, to relationship build where, you know, some of us have worked together um, quite closely for years, but a lot of us are, are new to each other. And so we want to introduce or reintroduce ourselves to one another and understand our relationship, uh, relationships to the informatics landscape and to the care principles landscapes. Um, and so a big part of what we're doing right now is learning and self-study, right? So start the process of of deepening our understanding of fair and care principles and concepts. Um, you know, some people fall on one side or the other or have a, a deeper understanding of fair or care or, or none. Um, but in thinking through, coming together to think through how we might put that 
these principles, these concepts into practice. And then, of course, um, you know, trying to come away from this year one symposium with our sort of work plan for the next year. Um, what specific topics do we need to probe in more depth in the webinar series? Um, how are we going to work towards solutions to these challenges? And so to give you a flavor of the activities, you know, we have a, a um, sort of, again, the learning and community building activities on the fair and on the care side. Um, we're really going to start digging into the data resources uh, so we can um, catalyze the discussion on the case studies. And our work is really anchored by these small roundtable discussions where we've narrowed down six topics for deeper, um, more meaningful discussions. So thinking about the technical capacity and linked open data amongst our um, landscape, um, thinking through for each of the data resources we interact with what do, and for ourselves, what does careful data curation and data sharing mean, sharing mean to us? Thinking about what we might need for um, uh, implementing more authority to control and governance um, in, in our data resources. Um, and, uh, you know, then data repositories as works in progress. Um, how do we um, sort of carefully um, and, and thoughtfully implement um, and, and move our, our data resources forward in a number of ways. Um, what is collective benefit? Who are we doing this for? How are we engaging with people? Who are we engaging with? Who are we not engaging with? And where do we need to go? Um, and then pathways for new collaboration. So that um, is a preview of what I'll be working on, and a number of us will be working on a lot over the next few years. Um, we'd love to engage with others who are interested in these topics, and so I've listed the names and emails of all of the, the primary PIs um, on this slide, but, but note that this is a broader effort than just the folks that are here, um, and so I look forward to sharing maybe some results of what we've, we're doing um, uh, at the next All Hands meeting. Thank you.